All right, we're live in Brazil, all right? If you guys don't know, I moved here. This is Skylar. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you five reasons why you should become a passport, bro. I got five reasons for you, okay? One of them is a beach. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, what's up? Hey, see how cool they are out here? You keep looking back too. But anyway, all right, so five. The five reasons, I'm gonna list them out here and then I'm gonna go into detail. So number one is you don't understand the US dollar strength, okay? Number two, cost of living. Number three, dating. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk a lot about that. It's gonna be a long section. Uh, culture, when we talk about wokeism and feminism, we're gonna cover that. And health and wellness, right? I gave you the cheat code, but tune in for more detail. All right, so number one is the US dollar. All right, the US dollar is extremely strong when you go to these other countries. You're, um, you're going to get more for your money, period, right? We're looking at the currency now. Uh, the Brazilian hay ice is 5.1 Brazilian hay ice to the dollar. That's not a direct five to one uh, strength. However, you're going to get, um, food is gonna be extremely cheap. Accommodations are gonna be extremely cheap. Going out to eat, um, you know, buying medicine. You know, all of those things are gonna be a lot, a lot cheaper, okay? You have to learn how to leverage your dollar because if, look at what's going on in the United States. Everything is getting expensive. It's hard to buy a house now. Uh, people are downsizing on their cars, right? Health insurance is insane, okay? So you have to factor all of that stuff in when it comes to uh, you know, estate planning, right? If you're really trying to uh, invest your money, if you're really trying to save, what better way to save money by living in another country? It's, it's pretty much like a no-brainer, okay? Um, you know, having a strategy, like a debt-free strategy, I'm sorry for this, uh, I just got a little, sorry for the, uh, for the, for the loud sounds, but having, but having a strategy um, on top of like a debt-free strategy, on top of leveraging geo-arbitrage, going to another place and living cheaply, is how you, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wealth hack, okay? All right, so let's talk about number two. All right, number two, the number two reason why you should become a passport, bro, is cost of living, okay? When we talk about cost of living in these other countries, when we talk about rent payments, right? I know people out here in Brazil, check this out. I know people out here in Brazil where they're living, the Brazilians are living off of $600 a month. I, I, I talked to a girl and I asked her, I said, just, you know, just asking the question, okay, how much money do you make a month, right? She has her own apartment, okay? I said, how much do you make a month? And she said her best, she said she typically makes $400 but her best month is $600. She gave me the equivalent. And I'm like, really? So she has her own apartment. It's in Rio de Janeiro, but it's outside of the tour zone. So she's able to live, have an apartment, food, groceries, and all that type of stuff for $600 a month, okay? And she's not far from the beach. So yeah, like once you leave uh, Copacabana and Ipanema and Leblon and all that type of stuff, once you go out into the outskirts, you're going to, um, you're gonna be, you can, you can potentially save a lot of money. They got a lot of money out here. You, you know what I mean? So you gotta factor that in. What about uh, healthcare, right? How much is, how much is healthcare in Brazil? Like medicine is super, super cheap. Uh, clothes, shoes, you know what I mean? Um, pretty much everything that you can name. Like gro grocery bill, like your grocery bill is going to be dirt cheap. There's fresh produce everywhere. So you're eating healthy. You're eating a lot healthier here in Brazil, right? There's a lot, there's a lot. I noticed there's a lot less sodium in the food here too. So you are um, taking advantage of that, of those cost, of that cost of living, right? Instead of spending all the money on, expi on, 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 on your rent, a car, a, a car loan and all that type of stuff, 
you will be able to pocket more money living in, in another country and then investing that in the U.S. stock market, right? Just imagine, for instance, like your rent was 600 bucks a month, right? And you're making $8,000 a month or whatever the case is. How much money would you be able to save? Okay, so actually living overseas is kind of like a little, like I said, it's a, it's a little uh, investment hack, okay? So taking advantage of that now, especially with this economy at the way that it's going uh, currently, you know, with the Fed continuing to, to print money, right? So eventually I believe that the, it's gonna give, we're gonna hit a recession, but where would you wanna be during the recession? Where would you wanna be at? Do you wanna be in a spot where you have a thousand dollar car loan on top of, you know, paying two thousand dollars a month in rent for a little ass apartment. You see what I'm saying? So you got to kind of start thinking about that that cost of living, right? How are you going to get ahead? You got to get ahead by taking cutting some corners. So why not cut a corner in in another country, right? Find that job that's going to allow you to uh, live in another country. Okay. Okay, we got the we got the popo. We got sister girl police. We're gonna get to number three, but look at the sister girl police. The police unit. They got the batons out, everything out, ready to buck, right? So number three, number three is what you guys are always asking me about. Dating. We got. I just had to get this out of the way. You. I'm just gonna keep it real. When you are in the dating market, you want to have some type of leverage. That's the, real, that's the reality of the, of the dating market. On the women's side and on the men's side, okay? Women leverage their looks. They can leverage it. They, they post thirst trap pictures on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, and all that type of stuff, and they can just sit in the pocket and wait for a guy of status to message them, a blue check. They leverage their looks, okay? It, but nobody bats an eye at it, uh, bats an eye at them for, for leveraging their looks. You know what, baby girl, if you want to leverage your looks, that's perfectly fine, okay? When you're in another country, as a man, you are leveraging your status as an American, okay? Because being an American comes with a lot of perks globally, right? You are, you are in a very, very positive light especially in countries like uh, Southeast Asia, uh, uh, Thailand and the Philippines and stuff like that. You're, you're seen in the total light, right? So you're leveraging the, leveraging the fact that you're an American. You're, all of the culture that has been exported from America, you're taking advantage of that. She's curious about a black guy. She's seen, you, she's seen rap videos. She's seen uh, movies and all that type of stuff. So she's curious about you. On top of you having money, they know you earn in dollars. I brought it, man. I brought it. Bro. Yeah, they, 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 know you, they know you earn in dollars, right? So, um, you can leverage that. All women want money and resources. They want a guy that has some type of wealth, something to that effect, okay? Women in the States do, women in Brazil do, women in Colombia do, women in Thailand do. That is, the, that, is the, that is the law of the world, the laws of attraction. But the difference here in Brazil is you can do it for a lot cheaper. I've showed you guys that, right? Instead of taking a woman out to eat in the United States and spending $200, 250 on a date, right? You can take a woman out here in Brazil and the, date, and the dinner date bill is 40 bucks and she's just as happy you know what I'm saying? She's just as happy, right? They ain't, they not, they're way less materialistic. They're way more attractive. There are so many beautiful women here in Brazil, so the women here cannot leverage their looks. They can't leverage their looks the same way women in the States do because there is a huge supply of attractive women here. Since this recording, bro, I've seen at least 20 cute girls, at least 25. So they can't, they can't, you can't, women in South America, they can't leverage their looks because there's too many of them. The supply is high. It's just like in the uh, United States, right? If everybody has a college degree, then it's gonna be a lot more difficult for, for everybody because if everybody has a college, a college degree, you can no longer leverage it anymore, right? 
if you if you're from a if you're looking at it from an employer's perspective, everybody has a college degree. So now you gotta have to find something else to the the, the differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself, right? It's the same thing here in Brazil. Consequently, every there's so many attractive women here. There's too many. Okay, so they can no longer leverage their looks. They're, if, if you break up with one, you can find another one just like that. It's not difficult. But in the States, you got to be very, very careful. You know what I'm saying? Oh, if, if you, you got to be careful on how you talk to a, a certain girl because you don't want to get her mad because you know deep down that it's going to be very, very hard to replace her. You know what I'm saying? Let's just keep it real. But here is in Brazil, Colombia, Thailand, Philippines, like if they, if they act up, you can just tell them beat it. And literally, bro, you want, bro, I had like maybe five or six girls text me today. What are you doing today? What are you doing today? Can we hang out today? Come on, man. They can't leverage it over here, right? Yeah. Right. So that's what, I, that's, that's the, that's the, that's, that's the, that's the kind of like the environment that I want to be in where a woman cannot leverage her looks. She cannot leverage her status. She cannot leverage her Instagram following. All the time is like, hey, how you doing? Happy? She's a little thicky. They all happy. She's looking over here, you little thick one. She ain't really that special, but. Anyway, she was all in the camera. They always all in the camera over here. But yeah, I wanna be in that type of environment. When we talk about dating here in, uh, in Brazil, right? So everybody says all women are the same. All women are the same. All women are the same. No matter where you go, women are the same. They all want money. What well, the difference is the women here want way less, a fraction less, right? They want a man to provide, but what is providing? I just told you a woman's, her whole monthly salary is $600 a month on a good month. And she works two jobs, two jobs, her total monthly income is $600. So what are we talking about? If you want a bill paid, I can pay a little bill. Like a little, your, your cell phone bill is $20, 10, $15, bro. So we can do that, but the thing is like, I don't mind paying for something when I'm gonna get something back in return. That's where, that's, I think that's where a lot of brothers are at, the, in, at a crossroads in the United States because in the United States, you are not getting anything in return. When you take a chick out on a date, it's a, it's a gamble because you don't know if you're gonna get anything back in return. What you gonna get back? You may not even get a thank you back in the States, but you're gonna get one here. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna get one here for sure. So they don't even tell you thank you in the States. Take them out to eat, spend all this money, all this stuff on the time, you know what I'm saying? And you don't get nothing. You don't get nothing in return. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, bro, I don't, we, we, we not, we not playing, we not, I'm not playing that game. I'm not playing that game in the States, bro. What else I was gonna say about dating? Um, I've already covered it again, but I'm gonna say it one more time. The, the way the women are eating in the States, there's too many overweight people. You got, you got, you got statistics out there, you got uh, people uh, raising a red flag. You got too many fat people in the States. So it's like, I see brothers dating all these fat chicks, these chicks that's not even special. And I'm like, come on, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? What's going on? Right? All right. <sighs> what else do I gotta say about dating? All right, that's it, next. All right, so let's talk about number four, which is feminism and wokeism. We gotta cover it because there's a lot of guys that are coming out and they're saying, oh, you know, this feminism in Brazil, you know, you're going to, it's raising feminism and all that type of stuff. First of all, you need to understand that uh, there's, there's multiple types of feminism. There's multiple waves of feminism. The feminism that's going on in the United States is it pales in comparison to the feminism in Brazil, bro. I would much rather be here in Brazil than in the United States, right? There is a contempt for men in the United States, right? Women, whenever you meet a girl in the United States, she's, she, she, you're already in debt, 
And I should be looking at the camera, but I thought I am, but I'm not. When you meet a girl in the United States, you're already in debt, right? She's always trying to tell you, hey, what can you see? You have to prove to her that you are the right guy. You know what I'm saying? You got to prove to her. Prove to me that you're really serious about this. Prove to me that you're really serious about that. And I'm like, yo, wait a minute. Because of the last dude didn't treat you right or your baby daddy didn't treat you right, you want to take that ish out on me. And we're not playing that. I want a clean slate. Here in Brazil, you get a clean slate. You know what I'm saying? You get a clean slate. Okay? Um, and I believe that the quote unquote feminism in Brazil is going to peak because in order for feminism, the fourth wave, fifth wave and sixth wave and all that type of stuff, there has to be money involved. You have to, ha they, you got to have some money, right? You can't be claiming you are feminist and you don't need a man and you can do everything on your own when you ain't bringing any money in. You, you know what I'm saying? So you have to understand like the women in the United States, which I'm grateful for, they have the ability to have their own nice apartment. They can buy a home, they can buy a house, they can get, you see women pushing uh, BMWs and Mercedes and all that type of shit. What you doing? You know what I'm saying? Pushing BMWs, pushing Mercedes. You don't see that anywhere else. Outside of the UK, maybe. But you don't see that here in Brazil. They ain't pushing the whips like that, unless it's their daddy whip or their mama whip, if that's. You know what I'm saying? So they ain't. So the money doesn't hit the same here in order for feminism to go parabolic. So we're not even concerned about feminism here at all. We're not concerned about wokeism here, okay? We ain't, I have zero concerns about any of that stuff. Does it pop up here and there in pockets? Yes, but the overall uh, economic indicator that I'm getting here in Brazil is that we ain't, that we ain't nowhere near feminism. You know what I'm saying? We ain't nowhere near that. Hola. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I should have said, oh, look, you keep looking back at the camera for me. What you looking at? All right. But anyway, so yeah, we ain't even, we're not even worried about that. And y'all be, y'all gonna get mad at me. You said hola in, uh, in, in, por in Portuguese. It's supposed to be oi. Yeah, my bad. I get flustered sometimes when I look at a little, a little, you see how they, you see how they do though. She stopped, turned around. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? What's this? They just you can just you can just approach you can just run up on anybody here, especially when you don't speak Portuguese. They already know what time it is. Oh, I'm just you know blogging, having a good time. You know what I'm saying? Come on. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that whole wokeism, uh, that stuff has this. There, it shows up in spots here in Brazil, but it ain't anywhere near it is in the states nowhere close and the same thing in the uk it's just not any it's not anywhere near that right i'm when i come to brazil i expect there's going to be some dysfunction it's going to be some boot some bs you know what i'm saying um but it's at a minimum okay it's very at a minimum and in, i'm very very happy to be here so we ain't even worried about all that stuff all right so let's move on to the next point uh, we're gonna head back to over here to see what, what wifey talking about. We're gonna get her to see what she's talking, chit chatting about. But anyway, um, number five, health and wellness. Health and wellness. Health and wellness. Health and wellness is uh, it's extremely important, right? What's the whole point of investing your money, grinding on a day to day, doing all of these different things? if you can't live long enough to enjoy it, okay? Brazil is a very fitness-oriented culture, right? If you walk the beach, check the beach out, right? If you check out the beach, there's, there's workout machines on the beach. There's a ways to work out, they got a track, they shut the road down every Sunday for, so people can walk the, walk the beach road, right? When I go to the gym, I see grandmas in the gym, I see old grandpas in the gym, I see kids in the gym, I see baddies in the gym. One of my boys bagged one and he been, he disappeared on me. I ain't gonna say who, but I got a buddy who met a girl in the gym, who li my, one of my partners that lives here, American dude, he don't, we don't even hang out no more. He disappeared on me. 
he, he met a little girl, a little girlfriend at the gym. Next thing you know, he's taking her to fancy dinners in, uh, in, uh, in LeBlanc. I'm like, yo, where you at, big dog? Oh, man, I'm sorry, MT. Okay. Okay. If you like it, I love it. We got a thick one coming up. Um, but yeah, health and wellness, right? So I have a personal trainer here in Brazil. I have a personal trainer. You know what I'm saying? I got a little personal trainer and he charges me $17 a month, or sorry, $17, $17 per session, which is an hour long. I do three times a week. We're gonna bump it up to four times a week. And I got my protein, I got my creatine, and I, I've, I've, I've been able to make a routine, a healthy lifestyle routine. On top of all of the walking that I'm doing here, right? Because Copacabana, Ipanema, and LeBlanc, in parts of Baja de Chajuca, Baja de Chajuca, sorry, uh, it's very walkable, right? I can walk three or four miles a day without even breaking a sweat. Plus, look at the scenery. You're gonna be walking and you're gonna realize that you walk three miles. You see what I'm saying? So health, health and wellness. There's way less sodium in the in the food here. There's way less sodium. When when you eat the food, it's a lot. It's very bland. But you get you kind of get used to it because it's a lot more healthier. All that seasoned salt, seasoned all Creole seasoning and all that type of shit with all that sodium, that is too salty. It's good. It tastes great, but it's too salty. You see what I'm saying? Just don't do it. All right. So I like the fact that I'm here and the food is healthy, right? A lot of you, believe it or not, a lot of the stuff that they sell in the United States, a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the Gatorades and all that type of stuff that they sell in the United States, they can't sell that, in, they can't, they can't sell that here in, in Brazil because it's unhealthy. They can't sell it in the UK. You got to understand that the healthcare system is a very capitalistic system in the United States. It's very capitalistic, right? They want you to be sick, right? They want you to, they want you to have health problems because they're, gonna, they're going to bill your health, your health insurance and they're going to get paid off of it, the doctors and all that type of stuff. But in the UK and here, I believe in Brazil, it's a very socialist type of healthcare system where, where the government has to pay for everything. So it's in the government's best interest that you stay healthy. Wouldn't you wanna be in an environment where the government is like, yo, we're not gonna put these products on the shelf because if these people develop elements, diabetes, heart disease, all this type of stuff, then we gotta foot the bill. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta think about that. What is, and a lot of people has made a lot of money in the United States by getting people sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at, I don't, the FDA is a fucking, a crook, a crook. <laughs> okay, the FDA just approved everything, the Food and Drug Administration. So it's like, come on, man. We, uh, we see that, we see the game how it's played, man. I learned that lesson when I was, I learned that lesson when I was in the United Kingdom and I tasted a Coca-Cola in the United Kingdom, and I tasted one on the, on, the, on the Air Force Base. I'm like, these Cokes don't taste the same. It's way less sugar. It's way less sugar. When you go to McDonald's in the United Kingdom, go to McDonald's, order a Big Mac, order the fries, a, a large fry in, in, uh, in England is like this, it's, a, it's not even that big. You, you get a large fry in, in the United States, it's a big ass uh, carton of fries. Like the portions are out of control in the United States. That's why so many people are overweight. So you know what? That's why I'm just like, nah, bro. Health and wellness uh, here in Brazil, okay? So I gave you guys my five reasons and I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a question, like, subscribe if you have any thoughts. Peace.